Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF and on today's episode we're going to be covering something brand new uh, and a quick shout out to my buddy Alex who gave me the kind of heel kills of this bottle. Um, so it was roughly sort of here when I started it and I've uh, obviously done my assessment on it and I've got only a dribble left so I'll be covering that uh, right now and enjoying that uh, pretty quickly. I think this is probably going to end up in my bottle kills probably after I've finished recording this today. But in any case, a massive shout out to my friend Alex for that because he's a bit of a legend and I've got quite a few bottles that he's given me uh, heel kills on now. So really helpful to cover some interesting stuff. In any case then, today we've got the Lag. Now this one here, as you would have seen below, this is the uh, Lag um, inaugural release batch three. Uh, pretty nifty looking bottle if you, if you like it, if you like that sort of thing. But um, you know, I like that sort of thing, I like that sort of thing. Now, Lag's come about because uh, the Isle of Arran, Arran, Distillery uh, got so popular, they're doing so well that they decided to release uh, to open up a second distillery on the on the island of Arran called Lag. Uh, in that process, the uh, the Arran Distillery has changed its name to Loch Ranza just to make sure there's no kind of weirdness going on there to make sure we all know what's going on. Um, essentially, what they've done is moved all of their peated production over to Lag. Uh, ongoing. I haven't tried any of the new Loch Rans as yet, but I'm looking forward to trying them. So this is a good opportunity to try something. This is only three years old. It's um, you know they they sort of started producing in 2019. So this was released in 2022, part of a, a trio of inaugural releases, batch one, two, and three. So surprise, surprise. Um, batch one was entirely aged in ex bourbon casks. Batch two was two and a half years in ex bourbon casks, and then finished in an Oloroso firkin. Like so basically, they custom built these small firkins. And this one here, batch three, again two and a half years in ex bourbon, and then finished in uh, Rioja red wine firkins. Again, those custom built firkins. So yeah, we should be seeing some influence from that, but we'll get into that in a bit. Um, released at 50%, all three of these were about um, £75 at release. Uh, of course, all three of them have gone. You know, um, I I don't often like to bring uh, videos to you guys where you can't get hold of the bottles, but every, every now and again when you get to try something interesting, there you go. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't get it, but they're going to be releasing more stuff pretty soon, and we'll get into the price a bit later on. Um, all good things as well, natural, coloured, non-chill, filtered, all the things that we like. Not much more we can say extra about it. Let's get into the actual tasting and see what we've got in the glass. Um, as always, because we know it's uh, non-natural uh, coloured, we can talk about that a little bit. It's um, It's got a decent colour, actually, considering it's three years old. But um, I imagine a good wedge of that was uh, cask influence from the uh, red wine cask. I don't know for sure if they've used first fill or refill barrels um, in, in the bourbon cask hard to say for sure but either way three years is not a long time so we've got good color on that regardless of what they've done so let's get onto the nose and see what we've got okay as you might expect it's um it's got a good earthy smoke about this you know this isn't kind of like a it's it's not like really deep heavy peat you know the 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 grain that they're using for this is uh, has been sort of smoked to 50 ppm Obviously, they're going to lose a little bit of that in the distillation process, but for me, it's got a good, good smoky nose on it. A touch of vanillas, and there's some sweetness on there as well. Dare I say, an almost fruitiness, which obviously now that I know what it is, I would have said that's going to be coming from the cask influence. But I have to say, if I hadn't have known that cask influence, this would be really confusing me. I don't think I'd have guessed the um, the cask type on this at all. Let's try on the palette. Mm -hmm. it's got a really nice mouthfeel about it it's got lovely sweet smoke mixed in with a bit of floral peat as well so not only are we getting those kind of the smoky notes we're getting the kind of earthy peaty notes as well for me there's a little bit of sweetness coming through again um, I'm going to guess that it's probably to do with that uh, that red wine cast but it doesn't compare to any other red wine casks that I've tried in the past. Uh, you know, you're not getting those kind of really big, bold red berry flavours that I might have expected. But, and again, it would confuse my palate if I was doing this on a blind tasting. I would, there's no way I'd be able to pick out the cask influence in this. But it is giving a kind of little bit of a sweetness there. And for me, there's a little bit of kind of sea air brininess coming through as well, which I quite like. Hmm. In terms of the finish, it's 
it's pretty good. It's, it's kind of um, medium-y, but it's quite smoky and quite peppery. The, the sweetness tends to disappear quite quickly, along with the fruitiness, leaving a very nice, actually, smoky pepperiness. So, yeah, in terms of, like, pure enjoyment flavour profile, this is pretty good stuff. I'm enjoying this. Once you start factoring in the price of it all, um, I mean, it's quite clear from the state of uh, the fact that I've got this bottle from a friend. All three of these bottles passed me by. Um, 75 quid each is just a little bit too much for me to just buy um, without having tried the liquid first. So, yeah, it's definitely topping out quite heavy for a brand new release. Um, usually, usually an inaugural release in my opinion, should be around about that sort of £50 mark to get people's interest. Uh, you know, I'm completely aware that these things cost a lot of money to set up, uh, completely aware of, of how much, you know, how much effort goes into making these things. So I guess at 50 quid, it's, it's a, you know, debatable whether they really make any money off of it or not. I completely understand that. From my personal feelings, the, uh, the mouthfeel that I get, the tasting experience that I get, £75, just probably a little bit too much. But, it sold out, so what do I know? Um, I imagine it's going to keep going on and on and on as well because, like I said, it's good liquid. It's good liquid. Just a touch overpriced for me. Um, let me know what you think if you've tried Lag Below. Uh, I, I understand that the um, Loch Ranza distillery is probably one of the most visited distilleries. It, you know, that's something I read in the um, Malt Whiskey Yearbook 2023. So I imagine this is going to get hit a lot. Um, now that it's open and now that it's running and releasing whiskey and whatnot so you know one day one day i might get myself over there but yeah again let me know what you think of lag below if you've tried it or not let me know what you think did it miss you by are you happy that you spent that sort of money on it um i had a look at the uh the the, the secondary market prices and they've just gone through the roof absolutely ridiculous um if you're buying that to kind of flip and move on then i kind of get it but if you're buying that to drink it's an absolute no-go from me, but I'm going to enjoy the last little bit of this, you know, trying to be fair to it. It is a good tasting whiskey. Again, just a little bit too expensive for my liking. Cheers.